Welcome back to our Chem 151 video series. In this video, we'll talk about how to draw Lewis structures. To draw a Lewis structure, our first task will be to count the valence electrons. The compound we have right now is COCl2. To begin counting the valence electrons, let's first locate carbon, oxygen, and chlorine on the periodic table. We'll box in carbon, and we can see carbon is in group 4A. We also box in oxygen, and note that oxygen is in group 6A. We also box in chlorine, and note that chlorine is in group 7A. We'll write this down below. We'll write carbon is in group 4, oxygen group 6, chlorine group 7. Then we'll multiply each group by how many of each atom there are. We can see in our compound there is one carbon, there's also one oxygen, and two chlorines. We'll multiply across. We'll take 4 times 1 for carbon for 4, 6 times 1 for oxygen for 6, and 7 times 2 for chlorine for 14. Then we add all of our answers together, 4 plus 6 plus 14, for a total of 24 electrons available to us to build the structure with. Now that we know there are 24 electrons, we will now draw the skeletal structure and assign the electron positions for the compound. We're going to start by putting the least electronegative atom in the center and arrange the other atoms around it. In general, if we were looking for the least electronegative atom, we are looking for atoms that are further away from fluorine's position on the periodic table. If you're in any doubt, you can always look up an electronegativity table to verify this. We can see from the positions of carbon, oxygen, and chlorine that carbon is definitely further to the left and definitely furthest away from fluorine, and so we'll place that in the center. Begin by drawing carbon in the center because it is the least electronegative, and we'll place an oxygen and two chlorines around it. Now we're going to draw a bond from the central atom to each of the other atoms outside. And each of these bonds will spend two of our electrons. Therefore, we'll place a bond between carbon and oxygen, a bond from carbon to chlorine, and another bond from carbon to the other chlorine. We're starting from our base of 24 electrons. Now we're going to take away the number of electrons we just spent. We just used three bonds. Therefore, we're going to subtract three times two. Three bonds, two electrons each. This means we're subtracting six from our starting amount of 24. 24 minus 6 is going to give us 18. We now have 18 electrons left to place. Now we can place those remaining electrons on the more electronegative atoms. It turns out oxygen and chlorine are fairly close together in electronegativity, but oxygen is very slightly more electronegative. We're going to place electrons around oxygen until we get a total eight electrons around oxygen. So we can see that oxygen already has two electrons next to it from the bond that is connected to it. So we're going to add six more electrons to oxygen. We'll symbolize those electrons as dots. Two from the bond and six more that we added. So now we have placed six electrons around oxygen. Therefore, we're going to say minus 6 times 1 oxygen it means we subtract 6 for those electrons we just placed, leaving us with 12 remaining. Since we still have 12 electrons remaining, we have to place them somewhere. Now we're going to place them on the next most electronegative atoms. Those are the chlorines. Seeing as how we know the least electronegative atom is the carbon, we're going to leave that for last. With 12 electrons to place, we're going to place 6 around the left chlorine and 6 around the right chlorine. So for chlorine, we have used six electrons up, so I'm going to say negative six. And since we had two chlorines, we're going to say negative six times two. That gives negative 12. And if we take 12 that we started with, minus the 12 gives us zero left, and we have no more electrons to place. At this point, we're going to stop placing electrons because we've run out, and so carbon is not going to get any more electrons. What electrons we have in that structure we are now going to have to move. 
but we cannot place any new ones. Just because we placed all the electrons does not necessarily mean our structure is finished. We're going to have to calculate formal charge for each of our atoms and try to get the formal charges as low as possible. We're going to start by calculating the formal charge on the structure we have and see if we can get a more favorable formal charge as we go. We'll begin with the chlorine on the lower left. Now I've written below that the formal charge is going to be the valence number minus the bonds connected to it minus the dots around it. Now if we look at the periodic table, we see chlorine is in group 7A on the right side of the table. So therefore we'll say the valence is 7 because that matches the group number. We'll then subtract the bonds connected to this chlorine, that's only one bond, so we'll say minus 1. And then we have 6 dots around the chlorine, so we'll say minus 6. 7 minus 1 minus 6 gives 0, and that means this chlorine as is, is neutral. That's a good thing. We want our formal charges to be zero whenever possible, and if we can't make them zero, we want them to be as low as possible. Through the same math, we can look to the other chlorine in the lower right and notice the valence number is still seven. There is still one bond connected to this other chlorine, and there are six dots around it. Seven minus one minus six still gives zero. But for oxygen, if we look back at the periodic table, we can see that oxygen is in group 6A in the second row. So we'll say the valence number for oxygen is six, minus one bond connected, minus six dots around the oxygen as well, and six minus one minus six gives negative one. This means this oxygen has a negative formal charge. Let's also look to the carbon. If we look back at the periodic table one more time, we know carbon is in group 4A on the table, giving us a valence of four for the carbon, minus three bonds connected to this carbon, and no dots next to carbon, so 4 minus 3 minus 0 gives us positive 1. This means our structure as is has a negative charge next to a positive charge. Now it turns out if you have a negative charge next to a positive charge, you can move some electrons to try to reduce the formal charges. The way we're going to do this is by taking two of the dots off of oxygen and move them into the middle between carbon and oxygen and make a new double bond. This is going to change our structure. We'll have C double bonded to O. The oxygen will no longer have six dots because it used two of its dots to make that new double bond. It now only has four dots. The chlorines are not changed by this. They still have six dots. Let's now recalculate our formal charges. Oxygen is still valence number 6, but now it's got two bonds connected, so we'll say minus 2 rather than minus 1. And it's got four dots, so we'll say minus 4. 6 minus 2 minus 4 now gives us a formal charge of 0. This oxygen is now neutral because it moved some of its electrons away. Now we'll look to carbon and see that its valence number was still 4, but now it's got four bonds connected rather than just three. This double bond will count as two bonds. Also, there are still no dots connected to carbon, so we'll say zero, but still four minus four minus zero gives zero, and so carbon is neutral. This second structure that we drew is the correct structure. If we had answered our question with the structure on the left that we began with, our answer would have been incomplete because we did not give the most stable Lewis structure. The structure that has zero formal charge all the way around is more stable. Now that we have the most stable Lewis structure, there are more questions we can answer. To learn a little bit more about this molecule, we can find the number of domains and lone pairs that are on the central atom of that structure. This will tell us both the molecular and the electronic geometry. The first thing we'll need to do is count the number of domains and lone pairs in the structure. When I say domains, that means two things. Domains can be either other atoms or pairs of dots on the central atom. We're not counting pairs of dots anywhere else, only for this carbon in the center. So we can see this carbon is connected to two chlorines and one oxygen, meaning it is connected to three other atoms. Just as a side note, never mind how they're connected for the purpose of counting domains. It doesn't matter if they're double, single, or triple bonded. We're only counting how many other atoms than carbon we have. 
Also, when we count the lone pairs on the carbon, we're not going to look to chlorine. We're not going to look to oxygen. We're only looking at carbon. And there are no lone pairs on the carbon. We don't see any dots anywhere on carbon. Then we add those numbers together and say 3 plus 0 gives 3, and that is our number of domains. Therefore, to find the correct electron geometry and molecular geometry, we're looking at this section in the middle where we have three electron domains. Now we also locate the proper number of lone pairs. If we have no lone pairs, our correct molecular geometry will be trigonal planar. If we had one lone pair in the central atom, it would have been bent. However, our correct molecular geometry is trigonal planar. You can also use this table to find the electronic geometry. For this, you only have to look in the first column. Therefore, it turns out, because in the first column we have trigonal planar, this tells us that our electron geometry for this is exactly the same as our molecular geometry. They're both trigonal planar. So just to restate that, in the first column you'll get your electron geometry, and then your molecular geometry will depend on how many pairs you have. And it is possible to have the same molecular and electronic geometry. You may also be asked for the hybridization on your central atom. This will depend on how many domains you have. If you have two domains, we say that your hybridization is sp. Three domains is sp2. Four domains is sp3. Five domains is sp3d. And six domains is sp3d2. We'll go deeper into this topic in a later video. For now, it's enough to say that because we had three domains, our hybridization for this molecule will be sp2 with respect to the central atom. You may also be asked about sigma and pi bonds. For this, we have to look at how many bonds we have in the molecule and look if they're single, double, or triple. It turns out a single bond is just one sigma. A double bond is both a sigma and a pi. And then a triple bond is one sigma and two pi. Therefore, this double bond here is one sigma and one pi. This bond on the lower left, a chlorine, is one sigma. And this bond on the lower right, a chlorine, is also one sigma. Therefore, if we count the number of sigma bonds, we have a total of three sigma and one pi. And so that's how you count the number of types of bonds that are in a molecule. Look for singles, doubles, and triples, and count the proper number of sigmas and pi's. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again for another example soon.